My name is Andrew Wollahan. I'm a systems engineer uh, in the CDF, which is the concurrent design facility here at uh, STEC. Um, I also work with uh, Clean Space. I'm Karen. I'm from Ireland. I'm from Cork. Um, I'm working here in the, what's called the Inspector General's office. I applied for a, the YGT, the Young Graduate Trainee position in 2012, to begin work in 2013. So I'm a Young Graduate Trainee. Uh, it's a one-year program. I originally studied astrophysics in Edinburgh University and then after that I decided to do a master's in project management because I wanted to move from looking at some small areas of physics to really trying to get a, like a big picture overview. Um, so I did a project management master's and then that sort of led into looking to what I could do, combining the two things together and naturally ESA is one of the main places that has big projects and astrophysics at the same time. So. I applied for this program and was very successful, great. <laughs> in school my main focus was both on engineering subjects, I suppose like physics and technical drawing and also the uh, uh, businessy subjects like accounting and business. When I finished my leaving cert I applied, I put down on the CAO form, I put down business or accounting in DIT and I put down a level 7 course in uh, Carlo which was aircraft systems engineering and then when I finished my leaving cert I got accepted into both. I went down to Carlo to meet the lecturers down there and here they have a hangar with aircraft, they have a jet engine, workshops and everything. They took me around to the workshops. I got to sit in and out of one of the aircrafts. And at the age of 18, this is much more amazing or much more uh, exciting for a student. So it made the choice or the decision really easy to do accounting or to continue with engineering. I didn't even think about that kind of thing. People ask that question from the age of six onwards and I never had an answer to it. No, no idea. I went, I went through phases of wanting to be a doctor, wanting to be different things, and it just changed every year or two years, I'd change exactly what I want to be. In, in Australia, when I was, first went to Australia, I did a, a physics course, and there was maybe two or three classes on astrophysics, and this I really, really enjoyed. And at the end of the semester, the uh, teacher had pointed out in her final report that Andrew was very interested in this topic, so I think that was my first initial inkling that I might actually go down this route, went to space engineering. Well, my current job is not really utilizing the physics that I, that I learned, but I think the sort of general skills that you learn in a science degree, so how to like look at a problem properly, how not to choose the first solution because there may be a better solution out there, how to sort of come to grips with a complex topic. I mean, those sort of skills is what I use every day here. I mean, you get presented with a new project that's got a new scope. It's a totally different mission. It's a totally different way the satellite's built. I'm not an expert in that. Obviously, I've only been here for, you know, a couple of months. But I use the skills to analyze and to really be able to understand complex things all the time. I applied to ESA, the Education Office for Sponsorship to attend a conference, the IAC the International Astronautical Congress. And last year this was being held in China. So ESA sponsor each year, is may, each year maybe 10 to 12 students to go to this conference. And then after the conference had finished, we got to do this outreach program where we went uh, traveling together for a few days. And from the NASA Education Office, there was a, an ex-astronaut, I think, who'd done two missions, Leyland Melvin. And uh, he's an ex-NFL player as well. But certainly, what the outreach program we did was we got to tr climb the Great Wall of China and so I got to climb the Great Wall of China with this astronaut and for maybe five, ten minutes I was walking along the top of the Great Wall of China with this, uh, with Leila Melvin. I think it's intimidating that it's so much new, new material all the time and especially being a trainee you, you don't know everything, of course you don't know everything, you don't have the experience but you have to really uh, you know, get to grips with the new stuff and that's something I think is intimidating but at the same time it's challenging and it's the challenging part of it that I really enjoy. My role as systems engineer is quite unique in that uh, systems engineering yeah, you get to get your hands um, or you get to experience many different aspects of uh, engineering so it's not that I'm really focused on just doing a thermal analysis or doing a, a structural analysis or something I get to see how the whole satellite is formed and so I get to work with these experts from thermal or from the communications or from guidance, navigation and control, uh, the propulsion systems. I get to work with all these experts. 
and sort of help the system, the satellite system, come together. So it's quite nice, and I really enjoy being able to see the different, how the different subsystems within a satellite come together and how they're formed. So it's it's quite nice. It's good. Well, I mean, I think any science and engineering subject, as a core degree subject, is still it's a really good base, and you can move between them probably more than you realize. So I think choosing sort of the area broadly is, is the first thing. I mean, don't worry about this is going to mean that I have this job for the next 40 years because that's not the case.